Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. We are back at it again with another EDH game. Well, you guys asked for it, and I listened. In this game, Evil Adam is back. If you look really hard, you'll see him up here in the corner, just outside the game. This past week, I've been filming in Montreal, and this is the first game that I'm choosing to use. Josh is playing his Neheb deck and keeps a hand with Jaya Ballard, Two Mountains, Zealous Conscripts, Acidic Soil, Wasteland, and Heartlet's Hiyasugu. Mathieu is playing his Derevi deck and keeps a hand with Brave the Sands, Nerventhal's Disc, Temple Garden, Freyly's Llanowar's Fury, Fertile Ground, Windswept Heath, and Doubling Season. I am playing my Prosh deck and I keep a hand with Cinder Glade, Frexian Altar, Graven Cairns, Bitter Blossom, Ashnod's Altar, Dragon Skull Summit, and Pyroblast. Lastly, Chris is playing his Mael deck and keeps a hand with Jungle Shrine, Burgeoning, Regal Force, Flooded Strand, Avacyn Angel of Hope, Forest, and Savannah. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt plays a Temple Garden tapped for the first turn of the game and passes turn. Josh plays a Mountain and also passes. Chris gets up to no good and plays a Forest and starts the fun by casting Burgeoning and passing. I play a Cinder Glades and Chris gets to drop a Sunpale Grove. Matt plays a Windswept Heath for his turn, and Chris drops a Flooded Strand. Matt then cracks his fetch land, but before he goes to find his land, he casts Fertile Ground in his Temple Garden. Chris also takes this as an opportunity to crack his own fetch land. Josh plays a Mountain, and Chris gets to put a Jungle Shrine on the field. Chris has no lands to play, which is strange since he seems to have played one on everyone else's turn, and he casts his General, Mael, before passing. I play Dragon Skull Summit, and Chris can't be outdone, and he drops a Savannah. I then pay 2 to cast a Bitter Blossom, and I pass my turn. Matt plays a Plains, and Chris drops another land. Matt then casts Derevi, untapping his Temple Garden, which he then taps again to cast Brave the Sands and drop Llanowar Elves. Josh plays a Wasteland for his turn, and casts Jaya Ballard. For Chris's turn, he draws and casts a Defense of the Heart, which is a really good enchantment. With nothing else, not that he really needs it, he passes turn. I lose one on my upkeep and gain a Fairy Rogue token. I then play Graven Cairns and cast Demonic Tutor to go into my library and grab a card. Matt plays an Arid Mesa and Chris seemingly having played every land in his library has nothing to play. Matt then cracks the fetch taking one to find a Tundra. He then casts Freilies and down takes his Planeswalker to take out Chris's Defense of the Heart. Matt then swings to Revy at Chris for 2 commander damage and untaps his Temple Garden. Josh plays a Mountain for his turn and casts Sin Prodder, something I'm strongly considering in adding to my Rakdos deck. He doesn't see much point in attacking and instead passes to Chris. Chris draws for his turn but has no land or spell to cast, so he passes to me. At the end of Chris's turn, I decide I don't like Derevi and I cast Pyroblast to take out the wizard. On my upkeep, I once again lose another life to make a Fairy Rogue with Bitter Blossom. I then cast Ashnod's Altar in my main phase and moving to combat, I use my first Fairy to take out Matt's Fraileys. With nothing else, I pass turn. Matt's turn is over pretty quickly as he has no land to play and instead cast Nevernyal's Disc for his turn, before passing. For Josh's turn, on his upkeep, Sin Prodder triggers revealing a Wheel of Fortune off the top. Chris and I have no issue with drawing a new 7, but Matt decides to take 3 and deny Josh the card. Josh then draws for turn and plays a Mountain in his main phase and casts his commander, Neheb. Josh then moves to combat and swings Jaya Ballard and the Sin Prodder at Matt. Matt is unable to block the Sin Prodder, so he puts Llanowar Elves in front of Jaya and takes 3 damage. At the beginning of Josh's second main phase, he gains 6 red mana, 3 from combat and 3 from the Sin Prodder trigger dealing 3 to Matt on his upkeep. Josh then uses that 6 red mana to help cast Heartless Hidetsugu, and with nothing else, Josh decides to pass turn. At the end of turn, Chris activates Mael and decides to put Terracidon into play from the cards he sees. He targets one of Josh's mountains, Matt's Temple Garden, which also has the added benefit of removing the fertile ground, and lastly targets his own burgeoning as it's outlived its purpose. All three permanents get destroyed, and each person, except for me, gets a 3-3 elephant. Chris has no land for turn, but he has a substantial amount to begin with, so he moves to combat, swinging his Terracidon at Josh. Josh chumps the Terracidon with the token Chris had just given him, and with nothing else, Chris passes turn. Once again, I lose one life on my upkeep to get another fairy token, and moving to my main phase, I cast Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the new fairy to go and tutor for a card. 
I grab and cast Sky Shroud Claim, sacrificing two of the fairies to Ashnod's altar to grab a Taiga and a Bayou. Matt draws and plays an island for his turn, and passes to Josh. Josh reveals a Vandal Blast on his upkeep from the Sin Prodder trigger, and Chris decides to take the one to deny Josh the card. Josh then plays a Valakut the Molten Pitacle for his land for turn, and activates the Heartless Hidetsugu during his pre-combat main phase. We all lose half of our life, with Chris and I dropping to 18, Matt going to 16, and Josh hitting a cool 20. Moving to the start of Josh's combat step, Matt pops his disc to wipe the board, and Chris activates Mael to see what he might hit. Josh also decides to do something, and he activates Jaya Ballard, paying 2 mana to discard Pyrohemia to deal 3 damage to Matt. As Josh no longer has any creatures to attack, nor does he want to cast any spells, he passes turn. Chris draws for turn, and isn't too upset to find and cast Yosei the Morningstar during his first main phase. Although I will say his copy doesn't have the new sweet iconic Masters art, I'll still allow it. As apparently only the mono red deck is able to hit his land drops reliably, I miss my land drop as well, and I play Parallel Lies for my turn, and pass. Matt also has no lands for turn, and I'm sensing a theme in this game, so he uses Derevi's ability to bring her in for 4. With Derevi's trigger, he untaps his tropical island, and then taps it again to cast Utopia Sprawl on it, and chooses green for the enchantment. With nothing else, Matt passes to Josh. Josh draws and miracles reforge the soul from the top of his library for his turn, and we all discard our hands and draw 7. Josh then drops a mountain for his turn, and he casts Fire Diamond, and then a Ruby Medallion back to back before passing to Chris. Chris plays a Moss Wart Bridge for his turn, and hides away a card before dropping two amazing EDH enchantments, Greater Good, and Survival of the Fittest. I get to live the proverbial dream by playing a land for turn, and Rootbound Crag comes into play. I then cast Perforos, pretty much declaring war against everyone else at the table, and finish off with a Skull Clamp. Matt plays a Sunpale Grove for his turn, and taps a land to cast Soul Ring. Matt then casts Tamiyo Field Researcher, and we all make a bit of a misplay. He uses her minus 2 ability to keep two of my lands tapped, which, if you read the ability, he can't actually do. This may seem like a huge issue, but it doesn't change too much in my mind, and I'll explain it more later on. Matt then casts a Kadama's Reach to find two basics, and puts one onto the field, and one into his hand. Moving to combat, Matt then sings Derevi at me for two, and uses Derevi's untap trigger to untap herself. With nothing else, Matt passes to Josh. Josh plays a mountain for his turn, and isn't content with Matt's move, albeit an incorrect one to slow me down. Josh takes it upon himself to use his wasteland to take out my Dragon Skull Summit, and to put him back even further. Josh then casts Grenzo Havoc Razor before passing to Chris. During Chris's turn, he discards Kiki Jiki to his survival of the fittest to go and find a Sun Titan. Chris then plays a Hall of the Bandit Lord, coming into play tapped, and pays 6 mana to cast his Sun Titan and returns a Flooded Strand with the trigger. Chris then moves to combat and swings Yosei at me for 5. I draw and play a Swamp for turn, which if we'd read Tamiyo, would have basically allowed me to win, but, as I'm bad, I instead cast Eternal Witness, dealing 2 to the table and returning to Demonic Tutor to my hand. Matt plays a Plains and casts Elspeth Sun's Champion. Matt then down takes her to blow up all the big baddies on the table, and Chris sacrifices his Flooded Strand to find a Sacred Foundry and takes a total of 3 life loss to have it come into play untapped. Chris then sacrifices his Sun Titan to Greater Good, drawing 6 and discarding 3, one of which is a Kozilek. With the Kozilek Shuffle Trigger on the stack, Chris sacrifices his Yosei to draw 5 and pitch 3. He uses Yosei's Death Trigger to tap out Matt, who floats his mana in response. Matt then casts a Jace the Mind Sculptor, and upticks his Tamiyo, targeting Josh's Grenzo and my Eternal Witness. Matt then upticks Jace, using the Fate Steal ability which I don't think I've ever seen used in EDH, and puts the top card on the bottom of my library. Josh draws for turn, and casts Mana Flare, only paying 2 to the Medallion in his main phase. Josh then drops a Mountain, and uses the Valakut trigger to deal 3 to me. Josh then swings Grenzo at Chris for 2, and in his second main phase, casts Fault Line with enough mana to wipe out the rest of the table and win the game. Game review time. So, people are probably wondering why I decided to use this game despite the massive misplay from Tamiyo Field Researcher. Long story short, since I was watching the game and writing the script and doing the narration, I saw that Chris had that Yosei on board which would have effectively shut me down either way. Chris would have obviously sacrificed the Yosei to greater good to prevent me from untapping and not allow me to win on my turn. With that in mind, basically the way that the game ended was still going to happen either way, albeit it would have been a little bit more official. I really like the new Neheb deck, and I think you're able to generate so much mana in red, it's pretty hilarious. Heartless Hidetsugu deals damage, so basically Josh was about to gain a billion mana the turn that Matt popped his disc, 
and I'm really thankful that he did, because I'm pretty sure he would have closed at the game if he hadn't. Neheb is certainly an interesting commander, and it's really cool to see them do something outside of combat for red or spell slinging. Matt's Derevi deck is actually based around Super Friends, so the reason that you didn't see a lot of action, and you did see quite a few Planeswalkers, was because of that. His deck is not as brutal as Evil Adam's, but he still plays a lot of Planeswalkers, and Derevi is a pretty strong commander on her own. I like Chris's Mael deck, and I like the idea of cheating out giant creatures for only 5 mana. His early turn burgeoning was ridiculous, and being able to cast his commander on turn 2 was so frightening. I'm kinda thankful that Chris did draw the absent Angel of Hope in his opening hand, as if he'd been able to hit it off of Mael during the disc trigger, we would have probably lost the game. My Prosh deck is kind of in an awkward place, as it's not quite competitive, but it's not quite casual. I'm a little on the fence of where I should take it, whether I should cut some of the bigger cards like Doubling Season, Parallel Lives, and just add more mana dorks to make it faster, or just go the opposite direction and run a bunch of token generators and have fun with it. Either way, it's still my favorite deck, and I'm really glad I had a chance to play it on camera again. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit my Patreon link below. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more.